Hi, my name is Patricia Nugaira. I'm a professor at the University of Peru Interior in Portugal, and my presentation title is Exploring Space-Based Narratives, a Study on Interactive Documentaries and Community Engagement. And in this presentation, I will look into how interactive documentaries exploring space contribute to represent communities and offer a multi-perspective viewpoint, allowing audiences to interact with the subjects of the documentary. By making use of multimedia testimonials, interactive interviews and immersive environments, these interactive documentaries offer a more intimate and nuanced portrayal of lived experiences and provide a platform for marginalized voices to be heard and for complex social issues to be explored from multiple perspectives. I'm mostly interested in interactive documentaries that depict communities from within while portraying the way people occupy and live space. Some examples of documentaries that offer this perspective are projects such as I Rise, Gazes Derot, Welcome to Pine Point and Living Lushores, for instance. As corpus of analysis, I selected two interactive documentaries that seek to represent the daily lives of displaced communities. Refugee Republic, an interactive documentary that explores the daily life of refugees in Dominis camp in northern Iraq, and The Rolling Ten Blocks, which portrays the lives and businesses of several immigrants in the Blue Court neighborhood in Toronto. Both documentaries may be framed under, under what Sandra Galdenzi defines as an experiential mood. Although Gandenzi focuses on works on lo of locative media to explain this mode, implying the physical displacement within a ge geographical space, I consider that the interactive documentary selected present a space-based interface and invite users to navigate through the virtual geography of the place while listening to the subject's stories about their past and their current living conditions. To analyze these documentaries, I propose to employ Michel de Certeau's concept of spatial stories. De Certeau's notion of spatial stories revolves around the idea that by physically moving through space in everyday walks, individuals engage within a process of storytelling that connects disparate elements and constructs meaningful trajectories. As so, the stories they create on the flow serve as guides through spaces, transforming places into meaningful, navigable environments. It suggests that stories are not only personal narratives, but also culturally embedded frameworks through which individuals make sense of their surroundings. I propose to use this concept as a methodological framework and also as a metaphor to create a parallel between the practice of moving around the space and the process of navig navigating the contents of interactive documentaries. As with the concept of spatial stories, users of interactive documentaries, particularly the works based on spatial representations, as the ones I will analyze, to reverse and organi organize disparate elements while selecting and linking together the multimedia contents to create virtual trajectories across the interface. Employing social semiotics approach to analyze nonlinear models, Martin Ekin and Lowen also consider that walking is a narrative process since the interactive structures represent spatial and temporal patterns translated into actions within the navigation system. For these authors, uh, the narrative, uh, these narrative processes provide motivation for the choice of one strategy over another, and they influence the choice of translation of the meaning into forms this means of the nonlinear models into navigation and interface. Moreover, considering the diversity of contents, including text, images, video, and interactive maps, I will also delve into a multimodal analysis considering content, form, and interaction. The aim is to accomplish a comprehensive analysis that delves into the intricate details of the case study selected, considering the interplay of the various content modalities with the user interaction. The proposed comprehensive methodology in this paper aims to provide a structured framework incorporating the navigation structure behind each documentary to uncover the spatial stories created by the user experience and its social cultural implications. The interactive documentary Refugee Republic explores the, and portrays daily life in Dami's camp in a Syrian, a Syrian refugee camp in northern Iraq, home to around 6-4 thousand people, predominantly Kurds, who have fled the war in Syria. The work is the result of a collaboration between the visual Dutch artist Jan Rotesen, the photographer Dirvan Visser, and the radio and multimedia journalist Martin Van Tol. 
Over the course of a week, they were in dummies, in witnessing firsthand and documenting life in the camp in order to capture the material they used to create the interactive documentary. The documentary's interface is based on hand drawings and present a sort of cartography of the camp, like an interactive map where users can choose to explore specific locations within the camp or undertake a wider visit. The documentary offers four different routes or walks to explore the stories of each interactive path, path divided into four categories. One of the pathways is the camp construction route, which shows the early days of and evolution of the camp, highlighting the challenges faced by refugees due to the precarious conditions and lack of resources. Another perspective to visit the camp is through the Camp Life route, which showcases the everyday life at the camp, from the challenges of finding food and shelter to the small joys of community life and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Devoted to education, the Camp Smart route aims to show the challenges faced by refugees as well as highlights the importance of finding solutions. Finally, the Camp Money route explains how the refugees make their living and find ways to provide basic services such as clothing, food and transport, while at the same time contribute to create a small-scale economy generating jobs and some savings. Captured in real footage, the contents are intertwined with drawings by Jan Rutensen, as I said, in a minimalistic style, using nothing but black lines on a white background, or occasionally vice versa, a frugal but nevertheless detailed style, full of specific details that nourish the viewer's imagination. These sketches, drawings, these sketched drawings are scribbled and include words which contain additional information and facts, featuring reports of interaction between the recreators and the, the inhabitants. Sometimes, instead of drawings over the images, the artists choose to create a designed replica of certain spaces and include descriptions of the main elements. The cho this choice to include illustration as a multimedia element of the documentary provides to the project a kind of playful and innocent tone, a contrast that softens the reality externalizing on that black blank paper. The lines appear to be printed directly on paper with the particularity of including some words crossed, for instance, because they, they contain errors instead of uh, having been corrected digitally, which brings to the drawing an authentic and material feeling. The visual content is accompanied by graphic elements and complemented by ambient sounds such as machines, customers, silent conversations, etc. Particularly characteristic of the environment where we are located to contribute to the immersiveness of the experience. Music and everyday sounds also play a very relevant role in engaging users in the interactive experience. The music takes us back to the refugees' culture, the nostalgic sounds, collects voices, passing vehicles, background conversations, footsteps walking through the countryside, for instance. All of these at an ideal volume to immerse us in the local environment without distracting us from the central stories conveyed by the subjects. Considering the interface of the map, this offers, um, as previously said, four uh, different routes available to be explored. When we began to explore these paths, we found a complex non-linear non structure shaped as a network where each path crosses and intersects with other ones, intertwining the stories of the protagonists. The network non-linear model, as proposed by Martin Ecken van Loewen, consists of an entangled structure of nodes and significant relations with a complex organizational structure. This arrangement is particularly le relevant to show connections between contents that are non-hierarchical and non-centralized, because instead of imposing a predetermined sequence, users delve into polyphonic features and the meaning occurs through the navigation gesture. Along each route, the viewer gets to know the refugees and their stories in non-hierarchical dispositions. Each story is equally relevant when compared to the other ones, with no predetermined central nodes that force the user to follow. The predilections of are 
on the hands of the users who choose their routes and select the contents that they find along the way, including new videos and photos, which they can watch to better know the protagonists or skip forward and continue through the main narrative line. This interactive strategy, strategy allows the user to relate more deeply with the subject matter and with the refugees, as it ends up emerging the viewer into the world represented on screen, positioning them in the role of a visitor who affords the freedom to choose the itineraries and narrative lines, or in other words, the interactive documentary may be, may be explored according to the user's personal preferences. The interactive documentary, The World in Ten Blocks, explores the cultural and the ethnic diver diversity of the Rexdale community in Toronto, Canada, by representing 10 blocks of the Blue Court neighborhood and its inhabitants. This neighborhood was once down and out and home uh, for a diversity of immigrants looking for low housing rents, but meanwhile became a dynamic business improvement area in, Tor in Toronto. The interactive documentary shows how immigration affected and shaped the history and culture of the neighborhood through local residents and the small businesses they own. Mo almost all of them, typical restaurants that offer culinary delights of their own countries. Beyond the economic approach, the documentary foregrounds the cultural diversity and the multicultural community that inhabits this neighborhood as a way of highlighting the culture and the identity of its people. The interactive documentary is constructed with a first-person perspective, providing the feeling of walking along the streets of Lower Court and presenting the stories of its residents. We start by exploring the neighborhood as if we were walking through Google Street View, admiring the architecture and seeing people waiting for the bus, for instance. Then we virtually follow the route to Pam's restaurant, our first featured character. The documentary presents her life's journey, the challenge she faced in her home country and in Canada, and the dynam dynamism and vitality that she managed to attract to her restaurant. From there, we go back to the street, walking along from store to store, exploring the remaining featured businesses and additional historical uh, contents. Other stories include testimonies of immigrants from Asia, Europe, South America, and even the Caribbean islands. The World in 10 Blocks offers a multimodal experience with the combination of various media formats that combine, contribute to enlarge the, and strengthen the documentary information and diversity of contents. By integrating these still images, archival material, videos, textual and graphic information, ambient sounds and music, the documentary offers a rich and immersive experience that engages the senses and deepens understanding. This multimodal format also invites viewers to actively participate in the exploration of the neighborhood, in the neighborhood's diversity and multicultural landscape. The static images, almost all photographs, take us to visit various attractions through the street of the neighborhood, such as graffitis, uh, historical buildings, signposts, resident organizations, shops, among others. These images serve as snapshots of daily life, conveying a sense of authenticity and reality to the viewer. At certain moments, the documentary resorts to the use of different static archival images, meticulously selected and blended with current photographs to complete the story of the resident workers and also of the places we are invited to visit along the way. The archive plays an extremely relevant role to contextualize the user, since there is no way to rewind back to the past and re relieve certain moments. As such, the archival photographs became a means of illustrating the stories as historical backdrops for recalling the past, putting it into perspective with current times. Again, sound is a fundamental element in the design of this documentary, flowing throughout the experience. It starts off in quiet, calm and serene when we only hear ambiences such as birds in the trees, people walking on the streets or waiting for the bus, and develops into cars and other vehicles that circulate in the streets. However, when we step into a commercial establishment, the documentary conveys the sounds of that space, marking the difference between the interior and the exterior environments, while we hear voices in the mother language of the subject and listen to typical music of the interviews on country.
this alternation of music and language from store to store becomes relevant as it affords greater identification with the region of the world and involves the viewer in the culture of the subject we meet. When the protagonists speak, the ambient sounds reduce to volume without going completely off, ensuring the flow of the narrative and the, the acoustic unique uniqueness of the space. Outside use of ambient sounds enhance the sensory experience of the documentary, immersing viewers in the soundscape of the neighborhood from the bustling streets of the, to the quiet moments of a reflection these audio elements complement the visual imaginary, evoking the mood and atmospheres of that space. The navigation strategy of the Woldington blocks consists in scrolling down through the documentary's contents using the computer mouse to move around the neighborhood. Placed in the first-person perspective, on foot or by bicycle, the audience is invited to move through the streets okay. as if they That's were good. roaming around in a visual experience close to Google Street View. As we progress throughout the space and the narrative, we find people waiting for the bus with mild the architecture and the painting murals, passing by the facades of several uh, small stores until we step into one of the establishments and get to know the owners and their stories. With the fishbone structure, the interactive documentary provides the option of following the main narrative line by walking through the neighborhood or exploring further contents and getting to know each one of the protagonists. As so, the interactive documentary is built as a linear narrative that opens interaction to explore additional contents for each subject. Along the way, as we walk in the street and explore the surrounding space, there are clickable pinpoints where we find information about communities across the world that live in in blur court, as well as archival photographs that fade in and out with the contemporary view of the street. Thus, the world in 10 blocks presents the neighborhood as facts mapped and documented, reconstructed online as an approximation of the street as public space. As a special representation, the interface offers specialized images of the streets and the interaction becomes the mode of navigation and exploration that simulates the audience's embodied movement. The user is in place within the expansive, realistic images of the streets combined with the urban ambient sound, reinforcing the familiar action of walking through space, transforming the everyday practice into an embodied experience that contributes to achieve a sense of place. At the heart of the, ten, the world in 10 blocks lies an interactive strategy that invites viewers to embark on a virtual journey through the vibrant streets of Blue Court in, in Toronto. Drawing inspiration from Lefebvre's concept of production of space, I consider this documentary transcends the confines of linear narrative, offering viewers the agency to navigate and explore the spatial dimensions of the neighborhood at their own pace. Through this interactive engagement, viewers become active participants in the creation of special narratives, weaving their own stories amidst the urban life and the cultural diversity. And to this final considerations, um, I say that both documentaries analyzed offer a compelling exploration of spatial narratives within the context of interactive documentary. With such an interactive strategy, the documentaries transcend traditional modes of storytelling, offering a rich and immersive experience that celebrates the complexities of the displaced communities and the diverse cultures of human experience. Thus, the notion of space transcends mere physical dimensions. It becomes a canvas open which narratives unfold, identities emerge, and communities thrive. Central to the interactive experience of these documentaries is the simulation of walking around the space, a strategy that expresses the embodied spatial practice as articulated by Lefebvre and de Surtout. In this seminal work, The Production of Space, Henri Lefebvre, invites us to perceive space not as a static entity, but as a dynamic product of social practices, power relations, and cultural meanings. The author emphasized the role of everyday life in shaping the social pro production of space. Similarly, the documentaries analyzed immerse viewers in the lived experience of the camp and the neighborhood's inhabitants, capturing the rhythms of daily life and the nuances of human interaction.
As viewers navigate the virtual spaces, they encounter a mosaic of human stories and small businesses, cultural landmarks and personal testimonies, which con each contributing to a constellation of special narratives that shape the interactive experience. By providing contextual information, personal testimonies and historical backgrounds, these documentaries imbue physical locations with cultural and emotional significance, turning them into meaningful spaces of encounter and engagement. Moreover, from the audience's point of view, while navigating through the space and engaging with the contents, more importantly, with the subjects, refugees and the immigrants, the viewers are choosing their paths along the way and creating a personalized narrative. As such, creating a parallel with Michel de Certeau's ideas on how people create stories to navigate in the appropriate space, I argue that while interacting with these documentaries, viewers assume the role of planners, meandering through the streets, exploring hidden corners and uncovering stories that lie beneath the surface. By making use of the interactive affordances while viewers navigate the landscape to explore the spatial dimensions of the neighborhood at their own pace, they are enveloped in the sights, sounds and sensations of the communities living, weaving their own stories amidst the cultural diversity in the community life. These interactive documents this interactive engagement allows users to transcend the role of passive observers, becoming active agents in the construction of spatial narratives that reflect their experience of virtual navigating through space, transcending the boundaries of the screen and immersing themselves in the relieved realities of the neighborhood while accomplishing empathic connections with the diverse communities. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to discussing these topics with you.